What is up guys? Welcome back to another Gwent video. We're looking at some more card reveals. Now this video is coming out shortly after my NR card reveal uh, video. Uh, if you have watched that until the very end, you will know that I am very tired as of recording this. I decided to do it late, which never works out. So I don't know why I thought it would work out this time, but uh, we're just gonna, gonna power on through. I'll try to be a bit more concise, less rambly, but I can't promise anything because we're talking about monsters. Uh, always one of the factions I'm the most excited to see the cards for, and this time around we are getting insectoid support and organic support because obviously insectoids they do have their own leader Araka swarm which is directly linked to the organic special card type so let's just get into it kikimor stalker now i will just reiterate what i said in the nr card review video these cards so far as of recording this, we have seen two factions. They seem very tame, very down to earth, and I'm all for it. These are nostalgic card designs for me. They really remind me of how Gwent used to be a couple of years ago, two or three years ago. Way simpler designs, but but they're still a little bit modernized in the sense that they they're still pretty involved. Like th this is still pretty involved for a five provision bronze, uh, which was not always the case with these cards. So that's that's really good to see. But uh, let's let's get into it. Kikimor Stalker Insectoid three for five with Veil, which makes sense because it's hiding up in the ceiling. Zeal Order Predator. Damage an enemy unit by one or consume an allied drone. Charge one. Whenever you spawn one or more insectoids, gain a charge. Predator. Brand new keyword. Uh, so far only used on this one card. None of the other cards revealed today have it. But they have teased some uh, insectoid reworks. So I imagine Predator will be implemented on at least some of those. We know Arrakis... What is it called? Armored Arrakis. We know that is getting a change. Uh, that was confirmed uh, last patch when uh, they gave its effect to a four provision bronze. <laughs> so that's getting changed. We're probably going to get some other changes. Just some massive overhauls to insectoid cards, which is good because that's a fairly big part of monsters. They even have their own leader, like I said. And this is a cool card. So Predator, new keyword. Predator means that this card can only target units with less power than itself. So you can only ping enemy units with less power than Kikimor Stalker. Uh, and I, I assume that also goes for the consume part. You can only consume allied drones with less power than Kikimor Stalker. Of course, most drones are one power, but you know there are times where you actually do boost them with uh, spontaneous evolution, for example. So this comes down, and uh, yeah, it's 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 an interesting card. Like you, this, this, and at least one of the other cards. I don't remember if there are more, but at least one other card alongside this are very direct support cards for Galusty Warp. You know, the, the unit that on deploy destroys all one power units on the board, both sides, and boosts self by th by two for each. Uh, this card is very, very good at setting up Glusty Warp. And, you know, monsters, they didn't have a lot of ways to do that. Like, not really. Like, like, you have bleeding, you can do some pre precision stuff with bleeding. You can maybe even try to go for frost to at least keep the units low. A couple of neutral organics that uh, that you could set up multiple low units with. But nothing really properly supporting that card as a potential finisher. This does. 
This specializes in pinging enemy units. Uh, specifically, the smaller ones, bringing them down to one power. Uh, don't forget, uh, Araka Swarm, in addition to spawning a drone whenever you play an organic card, you also have five charges of spawning a drone. So this card could potentially just instantly gain six charges if you were to blow your entire leader. Uh, you probably never will do that. But it's possible. And, you know, you could set up a bunch of pings. You could also set up a bunch of consumes on your drones, which is good for, you know, Rand Warrior. Uh, she Troll is the card. Uh, could really help uh, play Frightener. And, like, that's, that's actually th this, this card. This is the type of design that I love in card games. It's a fairly straightforward card, fairly simple. Like, okay, it's an insectoid that that d does stuff with uh, with drones, like spawning drones, consuming drones. But it it supports multiple archetypes. In fact, multiple archetypes that desperately need support. And getting a bronze engine like this. Like, this alone is probably not going to put put she troll in the meta, but uh, this is actually a really, really efficient way to get some instant value from she troll. You know, get her out of range of, of basic removal, uh, force the opponent to spend something a little bit more, more powerful, a bit more expensive, and making stuff like locks just less efficient because she can already boost by quite a bit. Uh, as soon as she comes down, she obviously also has synergy with Glusty Warp. The same does uh, Ran Warrior. So those might be two engines that you do use in that deck. And Kikimor Stalker is just a very, very cool card. And like you just, like it, it, it has synergies. Like you gotta do a little bit of work, you gotta do a little bit of setup. And that's perfect. That's perfect for a card. And you, you look at the picture and, like, I don't even know what the hell I'm looking at. But I know he has a cool effect. And that's all that matters to me. Kikimor Stalker is just really cool. I love him. Next up, Acid Spit. A new organic card. Infuse an enemy unit with, if this unit has more than one power, whenever your opponent spawns one or more units, Damage self by one. When own power reaches one, infuse this ability to adjacent units which don't have it. So this is the other card I was talking about. This is so... So directed at Glusty Warp. Like, it literally just... It's like a spreading acid spit. That drags units down to one power, but doesn't kill them. Keeps them at one, and then it spreads to adjacent units, gets those down to one, and it keeps going. And that's that's cool. That's cool. Like this, this could really, really set up uh, Glusty Warp. Now, if you if you are playing this with the Araka Swarm leader, this is an organic card, so you will instantly spawn. A drone upon playing this, which uh, I'm pretty sure will trigger that infusion uh, instantly. So, it, you know, you do instantly get, you know, one damage on the infused unit. And, you know, we, ha we have multiple ways to spawn drones. Like the leader passive will spawn one. Uh, the leader has an order effect to spawn one. There are multiple cards already in the game that can spawn drones on order or on death wish. Uh, there's another one coming up that does it on order. Like, there are ways to set this up where you can you can afford to play this fairly late in a round uh, or even in a shorter round and still get decent value from it, which 
which, which is important because th this card by itself does literally nothing immediately. Like if you if you're not playing Arrakis Swarm leader, if you if you don't have any drones ready to be spawned on order, this does literally nothing the turn you play it. Now obviously you will always play it with Arrakis Swarm. You will always have, almost always have drones ready to spawn. And you can set it up in such a way where you can ramp up the speed of this thing like really quickly. And I imagine set up a really good board. Now, don't forget, every unit this sets to one power, specifically one power, adds a lot of points to Glusty Warp. So, obviously, if you can get this to spread, if you can get this to spread, you know, across an entire row, and set everything to one power, you know, that would be ideal. And it's also going to be really potentially strong. So it's it's a really cool card. Uh, it's nice to see they're still using Infuse as a mechanic, because it, it isn't a mechanic that I do like. Um, like, just just... Straight up giving ability text to cards is something I've been sorely missing in Gwent. Uh, it's, I've been a big fan of it in other card games. And it's it's good to see that it's here. And that they are still using it. But more sparingly. Which is also nice. So, uh, Acid Spit. I, I mean, th this is definitely a card that can work. If it turns out to be underpowered, you buff the provisions. It's that simple. Like, th this card can work. And it's cool. Okay, we're jumping into the Legendary right away. Hive Mind. Mm. You know what? We're going to come back to this one. <laughs> because I first want to look up Kikimore Hatchling. This is another, you know, just very simple, yet involved, you know, relatively involved for its cost. It's a four provision card. It's a four power, one armor. Order, remove one boost from self, then spawn a drone on this row. Cooldown one. Whenever you play an organic card, boost self by one. You know, so this can be set up to also be ready to spawn a drone whenever you would need it. You know, to trigger Acid Spits Infusion, to trigger the Stalker, the first card we looked at. And it's it's so simple. It's so beautiful. Like the card text is so neat, so clean, concise. Uh, but it's it's not just at the end of your turn, boost self by one. Like it's it's way more involved than that. Like you gotta play organic cards to boost it, or other cards that just straight up boost. That also works. And then once per turn, you can remove one boost and turn it into a drone. Like this card, it's not, it's not incredible, but it's a four provision card. It's a four provision card that can be set up to be about one point per turn and spawns drones like do not sleep on the drone spawning. I'm, I'm sure nobody is sleeping on it. And you don't need me to tell you this. Especially when I look like I'm about to sleep. Like, for real. But, you know, spawning drones is powerful. And, like I said, they, they've teased. And, you know, by... By, by making every new card about insectoids like it's not just teasing anymore it's basically confirmed we're getting some reworks and some overhauls to insectoids and i'm sure drone spawning is going to become even more valuable uh but it it was already fairly viable well not viable but important i oh my god what what is the word it's gonna matter. It's significant. It's meaningful. It's already pretty meaningful 
to be able to spawn a bunch of drones. But I, I can almost guarantee you it's going to get even, even more meaningful than it already is. And so just having just uh, this, this tiny little guy just, just doing it. It's great. It's just great. That's all I can say. And now let's move on to Hive Mind. This card is awesome. This card, awesome. Choose four different bronze Kikimor units. While in your graveyard, the first time you spawn a drone on the battlefield, each allied turn, transform it into the next chosen Kikimor unit. Now that's pretty cool. Alright. And if I look distracted, it's because I am just looking up all the Kikimor cards. <laughs> because I know that people have been saying there are only four, so you're always going to get the four. Yes, there are only four. Okay, good. I just wanted to double check. It says choose four different bronze Kikimor units. There are only four. But the choosing is, is more based on the order in which you get them. So there's Kikimor Stalker, Kikimor Hatchling, and then we have Kikimor Warrior and Kikimor Worker. Now, we don't know if Kikimor Worker and Warrior are getting reworks. I would... <sighs> Which, it's, it's the Warrior that destroys a unit and then, yeah. Kikimor Warrior, like, I actually really like that design and... Like, if they want to buff it, like, I'm all for it. But I don't think that card needs a rework. The Worker, on the other hand... Um, by the way, I, I won't be throwing these cards up on screen because I'm lazy. So instead, I'll just explain them. Kikimur Warrior is the 3 power, 4 provision unit. It's dual faction syndicate monsters. It has order, destroy an ally unit, then spawn a base copy of self on the row, right? So you... You eat a drone... You destroy a one power drone, you get a three power hatchling. It's like, not a hatchling, this is a hatchling. A warrior. It's like Revenants or Queen's Guard for, uh, or Mutant for monsters. It's probably the one that has seen the least amount of play out of all those variants. But it's a cool card. If it gets a buff, I am all for it. But I don't think it needs a rework. The, the worker, Kikimura worker. Four provisions, seven power, three armor, uh, exposed, destroy self, and like when he's on the melee row, whenever you play an insectoid, it gains one armor. I think that one, I think that one is definitely getting reworked because it's it's stupid. Honestly, back when it had four armor, like it was decent. It's actually a decent design. And I, you know what? If if they just give it that fourth armor back, I'm I'm okay with it. Perfectly okay with it. Uh, although its stats are probably not good enough anymore to justify that. Maybe if it gains five armor, I don't know. Rework it. It's it's not really that interesting. So feel free to rework it. But those are the four Kikimor units. And you choose them in the order you want them. This is an organic card. So if you're playing Araka Swarm, you will instantly spawn a drone which will transform into the first chosen Kikimor. So this card is not zero points on the ploy. Deploy. Unless you're not playing it in Araka Swarm. Uh, up until just now, I did think that you could play this on your last turn and just spawn a bunch of uh, drones. But I see that it is the first time each ally turn. So you are going to need four turns for this. And you are going to be susceptible to Graveyard Banish. Oh, that's sad. That's actually a bit sad. Squirrel is already kind of popular as a tech card, and this 
this card trades down just a bit too too much with squirrel i think i mean i know like if, if you start off if you start off with the stalker right the stalker is pretty good if you start off with the stalker you get a five provision unit immediately And then it gets squirreled. Maybe maybe that's not too harsh. It, it's still brutal. It's still brutal. A 10 provision card. That gives you. A 5 provision. Cards worth of value. Minus the one point from the drone, because you would have gotten the drone anyway, but now you're getting the five provision card instead of the drone. So it's like five provision card minus the drone. Ten provisions gets, gets screwed by a squirrel. It's it's not it's not game losingly bad, and that that's a term that I like to use. Like if something is if an interaction is game losingly bad. Then maybe something should be looked at. Like if this traded down to Squirrel in a game losingly awful way, then maybe that interaction should be looked at. Like maybe Squirrel would have been a little bit oppressive. But it's it's not oppressive with other cards, so the problem would really be with Hive Mind being not good enough immediately, maybe? I don't know. It's fine. It's fine. I, I do think it's fine though, and the, the card is really cool. Like I'm, I'm a huge fan of transform effects. I think transform effects are just so cool, and it's it's a flavorful card. It's potential carryover, and you know, you know, carryover is something we should be careful with. But also, when it's done in an interesting way like this, you can't help but love it. This is such a badass, badass carryover method. And if you do play this, and you do all four transformations, you know you could shuffle it back with uh, what she called. What is she called? The the woman that got nerfed because of waylay. She got undeservedly nerfed because of waylay. Hans Hansen, Alyssa Hansen. You can shuffle this back, play it again. Why not? It's uh, it's neat. I saw there were some people who who had some interjections about the power level of the card. Like the the cards that you are getting with this, like are they really worth the ten provisions? and you're losing the drones I think definitely and I also think that half of the units that affect this we don't know if they're going to stay the same as they are right kick him a worker I would definitely expect a change to and kick him a warrior might get a buff but also they might keep him the way he is just because with all these new changes, he might actually become playable in his current state. And it would be kind of a shame to buff him when he would already be buffed by the support. I, I think he could stand a buff. But uh, yeah, Hive Mind. Really cool card. Do does like this really, u really unique, really unique, interesting thing. Super flavorful, and just just fun. It is just fun, and it, it is interactive. But it's one of those cards where if you don't have a graveyard banish to uh, banish your opponent's hive mind, you're not really gonna get screwed by it. 
because it's just it's not that strong like 10 provisions it takes at least four turns it's susceptible to bleeds in some cases it uh i think it's it's just as powerful as it has to be and it's just it's not one of those cards that you're going to auto lose to if you can't answer and uh, as long as you can answer the units it transforms into, if you think they are problematic to you, then that's fine. You know, because actually, assuming the existing Kikimor units stay the way they are, three out of the four cards this transforms into are engines that start off fairly weak. I mean, the Hatchling is very tough. It's tough to kill for a 4 provision card. But it's also, like... It's a slow card. And Kikimor Stalker, like, yes, you can set it up to be really big. But you're gonna have to spawn a bunch of drones and then just consume them with him. And so he's not actually generating points. He's just getting bigger. So he can... Deal 1 damage per charge. Like... They're, they're fairly slow cards... And potentially easily removed in some cases. So I, I don't think. If I end up being wrong on this, feel free to make a call back to this video and uh, just tell me that I obviously have no idea what I'm talking about. But I am looking at this card and I just, I, ca I can't see this being problematic. And I also can't see it being terrible. Like, it's just, it's just following the trend of these new cards, where they just seem solid. Just seem so, mm, yes. Yes, Gwent cards, give them to me. You know, I, I will tell my son that this, this was Gwent. This was Gwent. Not Dana. Not Quirixus. Not Tear. Oh my god, Tyr. My son will never see Tyr. Okay, I will not allow it. Thrallblood I will allow because he's daddy. He's more daddy than I will ever be. But this, this is Gwent. And the, the art style, the good art, good art. Didn't really comment on that on the NR cards, but uh, the art is solid. Good quality. And this is just... This is the type of design that I like to see. Simplistic, yet involved. And just the, the, the power level is just so reasonable. It's just so within reason. And I love it. I love it. Tomorrow we're going to see the Skellige cards. Always the faction I'm the most hyped for. You know, based on the name of the card drop. Claws and Daggers. Or Claw and Dagger. I'm really thinking Beasts. I'm really thinking Beasts for Skellige. It's long overdue. But we all want it. And if, if that is what we're getting. We're all gonna love it. And it's... It's wholesome. Like yes, some of those Beasts are going to be summoned by Sov. And will boost him to Insane Heights. Most likely. But the beasts themselves, themselves, they're just going to be wholesome. They're going to be wholesome. And if they follow the design pattern, they're going to be just perfect, perfect valued cards. They're going to be, they're going to be worth exactly the right amount of points. They're going to feel so good to play. And it's great. It's just great. And again, if I end up being terribly wrong, if we're just getting a bunch of new warriors and they all are clearly overpowered, you know, you could call back to this video and tell me that I uh, obviously have no idea what I'm talking about. But I'm, ugh, I'm feeling the beasts. I am feeling the beasts. It's, it's happening. It's gonna happen. It's gonna have to happen this year, so why not just get her done? Please. And maybe a new location? You know, I love locations. I love Skellige. Like a bear den. Cave of bears. A 
Come on. It's gotta be good. Like, oh. A bear den. And then you can take one of your bears and they go into hibernation. And then you can, on order effect, you can bring them out of hibernation. <laughs> you can heal the bears. I don't know, I, just, I, I got lost in, 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 uh, in a dream world here where uh, Skellige gets uh, a bare hibernation chamber location. I really want to see that now. But it's obviously not going to happen. Okay, anyway. Uh, I said I wouldn't ramble too much on this one. Thank you for watching. Let me know down below what, how you're feeling about these new cards for monsters. Are you excited for insectoids finally getting support? And which of the existing insectoid cards should get reworks or buffs? I think like almost all of them have been just basically non-existent for a long time. It's going to be refreshing to see them appearing in the meta once again. And if they do so in just a very fair, balanced, playable but not OP way... That would be great. But uh, time will show. The expansion today is one week away. And in one week, we shall see. Until then, and until my Skellige video tomorrow, have a good one. And I hope to see you again soon for uh, more new Gwent cards. It, it, so far, so good. So far, just nothing that seems like it could ruin the game. But just cool cards to play with. You know, they feel new. They feel fresh. They look fun. I'm into it. Let's keep this going. Please, God. Alright, see you soon.